Wait a minute. Freddy froze. Freddy froze, you guys. Oh, no. I see. Wait a minute. You froze. So wait, let's let's go back. You froze. Um, you said that right when you were on a set of pose. Yes. Ryan Murphy said to you, you were in show business for 30 years and then you just froze. Oh, so okay. What did he and say? Because you just you just completely froze on me. Okay. And okay. you haven't done shit with it in 30 years of being on the but I said, like I'm saying, Boom. you don't understand, but you're different. You have had a different experience than I. So that's totally fine. And that's it. You know, but notice wow. in season one, when I was there working with them, mm -hmm. they went to number five in the ratings. After I left, seasons two and three were shit. But, you know, hey, what can you say? You know? And I am just shocked that you would say something like that. And didn't do shit. Wow. You know, but hey, it is what it Here's is. Here's the thing, though. This is what I'll say to that. Mm -hmm. Really wasn't his place to say that. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion, whatever. But mm -hmm. Paris is Burning is something that everyone has watched. And I will say mm -hmm. that you and your personality, you inspired the cinematic archetype of the carefree black boy. You did. But then also, let's before, like that. before so that, that film, that's true. There was, there was no Urkel because he was a carefree black yeah. boy. There was no Jamal. True. Jamal is on a show um, called On My Block. And, and even the white boys, like, like just Jack, Jack from uh, uh, Will and Grace, there were no characters like that on TV before we met you in Paris is Burning. I may be wrong, but no, no, I'm, right. I'm going to stand on that. You're right. You're right. You're right. You understand on also, like this. I also embodied the thing of masculinity because right. if you notice how the film is now packaged and now kind of presented, it's more presented toward the trans people. Me, mm -hmm. Saul, and even Junior are supposed to be the only, you know, gay, black, masculine possibilities in that universe. And as far as it goes, yeah, you know, that's that, but right. it still shows that there is a spectrum. And that's what I don't like about, and I, I, I say I don't care for, not, not that I don't like, mm -hmm. I just don't care for how it's currently packaged. Everything's packaged trans, and it's not packaged in is as a generality for me because I feel if she was going to do anything extra, she should have did a group interview where uh, people of different um, different backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, those who are non-binary spoke, those who are trans spoke, those who want to be masculine. You know, everybody had a voice, and I think a lot of those voices were taken away in the sense the way it's packaged currently but you know that's okay. only me i understand you know? i understand and and granted she probably didn't have the i guess experience to do that because it was all so new but in that case leave that to someone who does to make the film or make the documentary or to go and study. And I hope that everybody out here is paying attention to this. Be very careful who you open yourselves up to and who you allow to document your life, who you allow to, you know, write pieces on you or, or do videos oh, on you, do documentaries on you. Be very careful and very wise. Not, you know, Google's written wonderful pieces. I mean, I've looked at my, I've Googled myself a couple times. And I laughed at the amount of money they say I've made. <laughs> have you, have everybody. you laughed? Huh? It's in everybody. It's insane. Yeah. 
It is. I was like, really? I made that? I had that much money? Oh, my name. Oh, I'm worth that much? Wow. You know, a lot of Google, and let me, again, this is a new show. I don't want to get canceled, but a lot of Google is like bot activity. It's yeah. all a, a, like, very little of it is, is actual human, you know, yeah. in, input of information. But I want to go back to polls for just a second. What, other than that, that crazy um, comment that was made to you by Ryan Murphy, what was it like working on polls? What was it like working with, you know, the new, the young talent, some of your old friends, you know? Oh, one thing I loved was we had this comment and this thing about well we sat I'm just going to save this situation okay. we sat in a circle just talking about the old times laughing and joking blah, blah, blah. and then one comment came up a person who's a father of a house currently who was never around when all this stuff was going down and everything else and keeps screaming oh I was there back in the day we just had a little laugh about that. <laughs> and that was it. That was one of the best things that we did. I think I know who that is, too. But you know what? We're going to keep certain names in the vault. Right. We'll keep certain Thank names you. in the vault. I think I know Thank who that is. Yeah, Thank I, uh, yeah, I know who that is. But uh, <laughs> you know, for me, what I really liked was the music. That music makes a, a big... It was good. Impact it was, on it was me good first. With, yeah. with a show, like the the, mm -hmm. the visual is is in the cinematography is is you know important to me, but for me it's the music. Like I mean, I I hadn't heard "Sending All My Love" by Lanier in years. I mean, yeah. and "Hooked on You" by Sweet Sensation. Oh 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 oh! <laughs> I, I haven't heard yeah. that. And and then that that even the um the Kate Bush record, um the Running Up the Hill. Yeah, and it kind of trend like that trends like every five years or so, because it trended uh, last year with uh, Stranger Things. And just the music, from even with Paris is Burning, the music, before I even understood what I was watching, the music is what stood out. Because yes, of, of course, because, because the music that Franklin, from that um, era, who's who? it was, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And I always say it to anybody who, who mm -hmm. quote unquote, says, oh, da -da -da. listen, you don't know music. They had to actually change how the charts were done because of two people, Michael Jackson and Prince. They kept pumping out so much music that you had to, trust me, you had to get in a rocket ship to catch up to them too. Okay? <laughs> so yes. other people kept pumping out music like that. Every, every, like, of, every three months we had new music. New music where it was like 10 different songs every month because they was pumping out that much music. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, when I look at the charts today and people have the same record out for like five years and I'm like, you, you touring on that for five, five years? Honey, you needed to have a new yeah. record out a year and a half to <laughs> two years after that. Listen. Now that was long, but... Oh, yeah. You yeah, really and you know, and and really? it's, it's funny you bring that up because I was looking at a um, I follow Lettucey, the singer Lettucey. She's amazing. I love Lettucey, and yeah, Lettucey showed which had put up a post showing that her record had just entered um, in on Billboard, and I like the post. I just Lettucey is just wonderful. I just love her, but it was just so interesting looking at the other records that were on the chart that were beating out her record. And these were songs that have been out easily for, you know, maybe two and a half, three years. And it's just like, which brings me back to what I was saying earlier about music and, and hip hop and everything. Um, it's just like, we just as it's our subcultures um, in our community, um, music is one of them. Ballroom is another one. Fashion is another one. Food is another one they all intersected sometime. And it just seems like at this time, there is still good thing. There, there are still good things coming out, but I think people are just, just kind of exhausted. So there's not much. There's not much left. There's not much. 
It's not much left. You know, right. there is, and you got to look for it. But, but back in looking. the day, you didn't have to because they were right. putting it out for all of us. Right, right. And now you have there to was, do more. Thank you. Yeah, you have to do more now. Yeah. But you I mean, as far as it goes, we have to maybe take a step back and mm -hmm. relax and, you know, look in, inside to find that new, to find, to redo certain things in reimagined ways. Because how many singers like Luther and Whitney, you just using two, how many of them, those, those songs that they did were remakes from back mm -hmm. in the past, but they brought them, they brought new life to them. Right. So as far as it goes, we need to think about doing those things and we need to think about, you know, reimagining some of the things that we've done. Um, like old hip hop. Nobody has ever thought of re revitalizing that. You know, they think of, oh, okay, bring it back, the old ones, da da da. No. While somebody new, take that and say, okay, cool, we're going to honor you by doing what you've done. And that's it. It's still, it's still their stuff. They're still getting paid on it, hopefully 100%. But then as far as it goes, it's just the thing that it's being revitalized. It's just being brought to new audiences, younger audiences. And, and that's it. I'm glad you brought that up because that brings me right back to what I was talking about, you know, hip hop turning 50 in August and everything. I want to know if you've seen any parallels and intersections with hip hop and ballroom culture. I mean, Queen Latifah's won because Queen Latifah asked Kim to, you know, lend her a couple of things for a certain video for the, um, what was it? I think it was for the Gimme Body. Oh, um, uh, Come Into My House. Yeah, Come, come Into to my, my House. house. Right, and, and, my house. And, and also kids, now mm -hmm. Google may not tell you this, Willie Ninja. Yes. God, God bless uh, Willie. Yes, Willie. Willie actually was in that video. He's in that video. He was video in the video, yeah. Yeah, right. He's right. In, and he's also in Liz Torres' video. I can't Liz remember Torres the, video. Right. The also, name of um, the Adrian Alizea. Adrian Alizea is in the Malcolm McLaren video, um, and I think another video. But though he went on to be a model for, um, like, what is it? Um, what's that man's name? Salvatore Fer Ferragamo, Ferragamo and okay. um, yeah, he became a big model for Ferragamo and for a couple of other people, and he started his own line. Uh, wow. Very good for him. I'm that really happy. Him. Wow. Yes. Oh, and the the song, the record by Liz Torres was "If You Keep It Up." So if you go and you look at that video on on YouTube, you it's just like a whole ball, pretty much. It's a ball. Yeah. <laughs> if you keep it up, but see, see here's the thing that always gets me and again i talk about subcultures and you know how they run with each other then they kind of drift and then they cross and then they run parallel you know in the 80s like ballroom hip-hop was in its infancy and then it grew in the 90s like in the early 90s got very popular got organized um and that's also when the homo thug imagery came about you know, like the B-Boy Blues, everybody wanted to be Tupac, you know, the Butch Queen realness, all that. And then by like the mid-90s, it seemed like everything was mainstream. Everybody knew about it. It became easier, you know, to be a part of it. And then that legend and icon talk started. Remember? That, that whole talk about who's a legend, who's an icon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And which I was just yeah, like, yeah, listen, yeah. whatever, all whatever, that whatever. Stuff. <laughs> and now, like both hip-hop and, you know, ballroom, are kind of all over the place. And I'm not complaining about that. Like, it's, this is just an observation. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the rappers look like they came from the Kiki Ball. <laughs> they do. You know? And the, the Kiki Balls, if you've never Let's seen the Kiki like Ball, I, Kiki mean, all over I can't say anything about that because as far as it goes, to me, remember, I came up with it was ultra mega hardness. When you had to be so hard, where you walked and you could make the ground shake and tremble in your wake as you're coming and as you've gone. So to be hard or quote unquote masculine to me, mm -hmm. I, I like I'm saying, you, 
That's not no, I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> I totally get it. No, no, you had you had to be the real deal. I even had, remember when, when had I was so younger, real. you had to be the real deal. Yeah, yeah. You had to be so real. Let's put it like this. You could be on the train. Somebody looked at you, you go, you know, you got you, you get, get get scared, shit like that, you know. I mean, that's how real and that's yeah. how hard you had to be back then. But you know, man. speaking of rappers, there was a rapper, I don't remember his name. I don't even remember. I, it's probably not even relevant. But he had made some like homophobic remarks about it takes two. You know, it takes two by Rob Basin, uh, DJ yeah. Easy Rock. Rest in peace, DJ Easy Rock. Um, yeah. Being featured on an episode of Pose. Yeah. And I think it was the episode where um, Damon, um, played by uh, Ryan Jamal uh, Swain, shout out to Ryan, he won that trophy and he left. He was just, I, I, I want to say that was like, Maybe season two, episode eight, something like that. It had to be season two. <laughs> but th- here's my thing. If you, what are you doing watching something that you hate so much? You get what I'm saying? Like, people, th- this world that we live in now, Freddie, is just so weird. It's like, you know, people so talk about around. things that they hate. All day they talk about stuff they hate. Like, I'm old enough to say that I can remember a time where, and this was before social media where people didn't talk about stuff that they hated. And, right. if you, and like, if you hate something, why are you talking about it? Leave it alone. Don't mention it. Don't bring it up. Don't look at it. Like, what do you hate watching something for? What do you hate listening to something for? You know, it's like people just want to be misery. Thank you. Yeah, or maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. I just, I'm old enough to remember a different world where this type of thing just did not go on. Like, we didn't act this way. Of course. You know, if you hate something so much, don't fucking mess with it then. But see, this is what they love to see. You have to understand. And it's funny, I'm going to even reference something to it. Um, we want the ones we love to scorn us. Hmm. And it's constant. It's funny. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to reference this. Shaka Khan wrote this song called Love Shaka. My Eyes. Right? Mm. And in it, it says, what the chorus is constantly the ones we love scorn us. Misery loves company. All That whole thing is just the society. Yes. Because it wants to be torn down and this, that, and the other, told it's wrong and miserable and everybody wants to do this together and it loves the company but it doesn't want to actually do it yeah and it's also a projection of just deeper feelings that that individual has toward themselves definitely you know, the, the definitely. hate that they have within themselves toward themselves perhaps they see something in others that they wish they could have that they like but that they hate that they don't have if that makes any sense yeah if that makes yeah. any sense True, true. You know, it, and, and it's all very, like, day-to-day, I try to just get a better understanding of just society and just why people behave the way they do, mm-hmm. but it is very fucking exhausting. Mm-hmm. Look, I'll say it like this. After cancer would stop me my, stop my masters, um, and then a week after a full year finding out that I was cancer-free, a heart attack, I don't care how society can do whatever it wants. I'm going to be, I'm going to do me. I'm a chill. I'm going to try to enjoy my life, right. you know, and, you know, sail. That's it. Exactly. Free, and you're doing, free, and by the way, free, you're, you're doing a lot better. You're in remission. I, I'm 100% I'm in remission in both senses. I'm good. Hallelujah. You know, I'm happy. And, yeah. you know, Success. That's all that matters. Is you know, are you happy? Thank you. Because when you're happy, other people pick up on that. Thank you. And they're yes. happy too. You yes. know, it's it's contagious. Yes. Yes. Like I, the and and the misery that's contagious too. That's but like when you're happy. I'm walking around my house, contagious. my little new place in Maryland. Right. First of all, you guys, we've been getting a full tour um, of Freddie's new apartment, <laughs> and, and you can only get that on the Chris David show. Um, so make sure you watch on YouTube. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, watch on YouTube. And I don't know, you know, um, I, I, <laughs> I think that it's, it's, 
you mentioned something earlier about leaving New York and yes. just going out there and, and seeing other things and seeing what just the world has to offer. Yes. Something that I've done, you know, quite a few times, like I've left my hometown moved to other cities and lived and had a ball. And it's just tell people out there why that's so important. Why it's so important for them to just go out and just get it's a important change. to expand. It's important to explore. It's important to to understand and know yourself even more. Because when you just like I said, in New York I was spoiled. Yes, I was spoiled. I was spoiled by New York. Definitely. But I mean, this is absolutely Gorgeous. I like I that. Mean, there's there's a little playground out there. Thank you. Thank That's you. going to be beautiful in the springtime when you start getting Thank those you. blossoms and everything. Trees, yes. Yeah. Yes. And you won't get I'm that in New York City. I can't get it Maybe in New York. Queens. Shout out to Queens. Maybe in Queens you'll get that. But yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy for you. Um, Thank you. So, Kevin Omni. Kevin Omni. Um, you <laughs> all know Kevin. Yeah. Kevin did a piece, I want to say, maybe a year or two ago with Jay Garson. Shout out to them. And um, on Jay Garson, he said that in order to be in a house back in the day, you had to serve on and off of the runway. Meaning you had to not only bring it on the runway, but you had to bring it on the runway of life. You had to do community service. Yes. You had to go to school. You had to just be a productive citizen. Talk about that. Yeah. You do know Garçon started, well, one of the Garçons, from what I understand, started okay. from Pendant. But, okay. need to know that. Um, as far as it goes, um, that is the truth. Mm -hmm. That is very much so. You had to do that. I mean, you had to be in everything that needed to be done mm -hmm. so that's it how does this thing go <laughs> i gotta i gotta ask you later on <laughs> okay this is a paypal thing what is it the cash app thing oh cash okay yeah i'll talk to you we'll get you later. set up on that and then what i'll do is mm -hmm. i'll put up like when i post this i'll put up mm -hmm. your info so that people yeah. if they want to send you a cash app or if they want to follow you or whatever they want to do, if you want people following you. Because I know I, you, you know, have, I, I don't know I'm, what it is about you, but you attract the stalker. I, I don't know what it is. That's what I'm scared. That's what I'm we'll scared. We'll talk about that later. We'll see if you feel like, you know, doing that. But, yeah. but um, speaking of Kevin, he mentioned, um, and here we go back with the parallels and, and the intersections that I, that I be talking mm -hmm. about. He said that the first televised ball actually wasn't Paris's burning. It was TV transvestite, which was back in like 82. Something called TV transvestite. Possibly. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Possibly. And, yeah. But yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then as far as it goes, there was even one further back than that. Because the one that Crystal LaBeja did. Which and was the queen, they, correct? Was that the queen? Yes. Mm -hmm. So as far as it goes, you know, that was the first. Then okay. came that, then came Paris, and then came everything else. So. Right, right. Well, I want to, you know, I, I there, there are clips of it, um, of TV Transvestite on uh, YouTube. And there was a scene, there's a, 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 a trans woman drag, or, or I don't know if she was a trans woman or a drag queen, but her name was Miss Sugar. And she's putting her makeup on the whole time, like just like how Dorian was in Paris is Burning. <laughs> and I'm like, so that's where you got that idea from, uh, Paris is Burning Lady. You know, because anyway. But what, what I what I what I found out too. Now in that film in that TV transvestite, there was a woman, and she was a biological woman. Is what a lot of people I don't think they know is a lot of um, biological women walk yeah. balls. And this woman in particular, she was gorgeous. Her name was Shemekka. And she walked the category of um, best dressed woman. Now, she was friends with Larry, Larry Ebony. And, you know, Larry founded the House of Ebony. And um, Shemekka was actually uh, Nikki Barnes, one of the, the Harlem OGs. Um, he, she was his main girl. 
And she was gunned. She ended up being gunned down. Um, unfortunately, it was a really wild story. But y'all have to look her up. She was just like absolutely stunning. Um, Shemeca. So Shemeca, it, um, S is in, is in sexy, H is in hot, A is in Amsterdam, and Mecca as in Mecca. So when, when the show is over, you know, y'all Google that. And, and, yeah, uh, definitely. Can, definitely, you should. Yeah, because I mean, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that ballroom wasn't just for, um, you know, queer people. No, it was, and it was a lot of straight people who went to balls because right. it was entertainment. It yes. was very much exactly. it was entertainment. It was real. You couldn't get it on TV. You couldn't get it in, you know, anything else. It was like both a sporting event as well as a pageant. And, uh, you know, um, it, it was so many things wrapped up in one. And that was it. And then you had the this element of danger in the sense that you go there because I mean to go to a ball at around three four in the morning not to mention the boys the bums having to go through the projects and everything else to get there right the rocks and the sticks and the cans and the bottles that be thrown the at locks you. and the locks don't say not the locks. these locks oh but you know the lock yeah. locks yes yeah. anyway all those things being thrown at you, mm -hmm. right? That was it, and trash and everything else. So it was hard. It was really difficult. It was very interesting. It had so many elements. Go in there and then getting home, please. So that was it. And people at that time understood that because I remember there were some cab drivers who would be like, they would wait. They would find out when the ball was wait at the train station to, to get you to the ball, and they would see the girls come upstairs. Yo, yo, you going to the ball? Yeah. Boom. They knew that was their money. They would take right. it from the ballroom to the train station three, four, five times, and they say they got them a night. Which is just, you know, people have to make their money, but I think that's wonderful. I mean, that was a form of, of protection, too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah they protect yeah. They, You know, the girls... They give them the money and they tip them, right? Because you make say twenty dollars a run per, um, you know, thing to the ballroom from the um, from the train station. That included tip back then in the eighties, around five six runs. You said for the night twenty dollars each time. Yeah, that's one hundred twenty dollars. like that was Uber before the Uber. That was Uber lift before the lift. <laughs> That's true. You go. Look, look, look. Ballroom <laughs> establishing firsts. Thank you. I remember when you and Saul, and shout out to Saul, you and, you and Saul did a Monet Exchanges show, the exchange rate over in, in uh, Brooklyn. And shout out yes. to Monet. I love Monet. Um, yes. and, and, and Saul talked about, it, this, this just was so funny to me. <laughs> His wife used to go to the balls to keep herself from cheating on him. Yes, because it, it, because like I said, entertainment, you right. know, I mean, right. it was a safe form of entertainment for a lot of people. And, yeah. you know, it helped her stay away from cheating and everything else. And that was mm -hmm. it. And she was around people who would glorify her and justify her and help her feel good all the time. In which is a wonderful thing. Where do you get that from? That's true. What show on TV or what record does that for you? That's, that's very true. That's very true. So it's affirming, yeah. you know. It's yes, affirming, very much so. affirming. Very and much and so. and just in our culture, you know, how many opportunities do we have to say that something that we sought out legitimately affirmed us? Yes. You know. Yes. I don't know if I ever told you this story though, but if I didn't, if I did, I'll tell you again. Okay. Years ago, I walked the ball. Okay. I was about 16 years old. This was in, was in Philly. And once a year in Philly, there would be something at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Y'all know where that is if you're listening and you're in Philly on 18th and Market. And it would be the Crystal Ball. And so my friend AJ, 
And shout out to AJ. AJ, I miss you. I haven't talked to you in years. I hope you're good. AJ, by the way, when AJ goes up in drag, looks exactly like Kelly Rowland. Like, fucking gorgeous. Amazing. But anyway, AJ says to me, bitch, we gonna walk this ball. And I'm just like, no. Like, I have on this fitted cap, a Mitchell and Ness fitted cap, a like 5, 10X white t-shirt, baggy jeans that are probably like a size 50 waist with a belt around them and my, my little butt out. Tim's, and you know me, you know I have big ass feet. So I'm just like, I don't know if they're going to take me walking this ball like this. Like, you know, they're guys who are a little bit realer than me, you know, because I've always had this youthful, you know, little child baby face. So I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if this is going to work out. And he's like, nah, bitches, it's realness with a twist. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the twist? I didn't know what the twist was. So we get up there, it's about eight of us. We're all like teenage boys, about eight of us. And we get up there and, you know, they're putting on heels and then one has heels in a purse. Mind you, we're still in our urban, urban wear. So I get <laughs> with my big ass boat feet. And I'm just like, I'm not going to fit these heels. Like, there's just no way. Like, I don't know well, how it's going to, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's just impossible. Like, I don't know. So this, 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 this wonderful trans woman, she was about six, seven. I don't even remember her name. She said, come here, baby. You going to wear my shoes. You going to put my shoes on. And I'm like, I don't know. I think my feet bigger than yours, sis. <laughs> no. So I put the shoes on, Freddie, and my heels are like hanging off the, the back of her shoes. I was chopped. Just completely chopped. <laughs> but, you, but you know what? That's my story to tell. That is. That is. It's a wonderful For my story. kids and my grandkids, that's my story to tell. For my, my, my nieces and nephews and godkids. So here you go. Mm -hmm. But I can't say that I never walked. I walked. I did it. And I walked when I wanted to walk. Not when you wanted me to walk. <laughs> Bravo for saying that. Bravo for saying that. When you reach a certain age, I feel, you share your wisdom. You share your experiences. You, you're supposed to be giving. And, you know... That's what I feel. You know, when I hear, you know, other people from my era do it, you know, I'm happy because what else do we have but the gift of giving to others the experience that we, we have gone through. And that's so it. true. And you've done that for me. And, and I've been able to do that for others, you know, as well. Yeah. And I hope that this gives people some of that wisdom. I hope that, you know, there may be some you know, young boy or girl, or maybe somebody grown watching this who <laughs> needs some type of just wisdom or some type of guidance or just, just to know that it's okay. And they need that Definitely. spoken into their lives. But I, I, I'm going to go back to when I first, when we first met, I remember you cooked for me and you made, I think you, you fried chicken and you made like rice and either succotash or lima beans for me. The lima beans. So well, whatever it was, I got the itis like immediately after. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Freddie, I might have to spend a night show. <laughs> <laughs> I said, baby, it's okay. Whatever now, it was, I was okay. just like, man, I'm because I had just come from from school. I was I was going to Columbia at the time, you know, and you lived like right up the street, like yes. right around the corner. Like I literally <laughs> got there in like ten minutes, and. <laughs> I was just like, man, like, I don't know if it's my class that wore me out or if it's this food, like, but it was just so good. And I think you made cornbread, too. I can't Possibly. remember. Possibly, but yeah. Either way, everything was delicious. I remember you had, um, you had Vanessa Williams' greatest hits, and it was, like, sitting on your bed. And I was like, I love Vanessa Williams. And you were like, don't you, I love her, too, but. You know, for some reason, I think she's mean. And I'm like, she's really nice. She's a lovely person. <laughs> just, I don't know. It's like something with, with women who have that look, like people just assume that they're like mean, but they're really not. 
No, 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 no. I, I understand that you have to have sometimes a certain look, you know, because people mess with you a lot. True. And, um, True. you know, I, I understand that. And but, shout out to no. Vanessa. Vanessa and, and her daughter, um, Lion Babe, oh my, Jillian, um, and just the whole fam. Like, I, I just yes. adore Vanessa Williams. I, I adore. Yeah. I've, always, I've always actually been a fan of Vanessa's. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I love her music. Then to now, um, yeah. you know, whenever she does put out something, it's just mm -hmm. always fantastic. She just is uh, a really good artist. You know who else is kind of in her tribe? Who, who I adore too, Patty Austin, the singer huh? Patty Austin. <laughs> that, let me explain. Patty is hilarious, man. She is just off the chain. She's a great, she's absolutely magnificent. No, let she me tell is. you a story. Let me tell you a story. Okay. One day I went looking for a Patty Austin record. At the time, Tower Records, there was one store Tower in, Records. Yeah, that far back. Tower Records was in um um the World Trade Center. I went mm -hmm. to the World Trade Center and everything else and i said hi i'm looking for patty austin right every like four associates were there standing when i asked for uh -huh. they all walked me over got the cd out said do you, how do you wish to pay for this <laughs> i was like you know i was like wait a minute this is like one of those heavenly experiences you can mm -hmm. feel yourself floating, them floating away to the, to the cash register and yeah. out the door and i was just like Okay, this is my Patty Austin experience. It's a heavenly experience. That was it. Do you I remember the record? Do you remember what it was? Then, huh? Do you remember what it was? What you were looking for? I was looking for a Patty Austin. Um, I was looking for Patty Austin Live. I think it was. Oh, okay, it was just cool. a yeah. crazy experience. I was just so they the treatment was so. So I miss we, Tower Records. I miss it was so record true. stores in general. I, Do you, you know what I miss? Tower, I miss Tower Records because, mm -hmm. like, once, like, especially on the weekends, mm -hmm. around once or twice a day, they play Michael Jackson's Thriller the whole movie. They play Michael Jackson's Moonwalk the whole movie, and you see the throngs of people coming in just yeah. to sit and watch it. So I know I missed the head store. I love Tower Records. I remember um, in, in down in, in Philly, we had a Tower Records at Broad and Chestnut, and it was huge. I mean, it was like seven freaking floors of just records and books and movies and just everything. Like, they even had a freaking porn section. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> they had a porn section? They did. They did the one in Philly. Well, the one in Philly is kind of like on the borderline of the neighborhood. So, yeah, oh, okay. so it's a little, you know. It's um, a little dicey. Yeah. Interesting, I'll say. And shout out to Philly. I'll call it dicey because dicey, yeah, you, dicey you is more know interesting. What I mean. interesting. Dicey. You know dicey. what I mean. But do you remember <laughs> HMV? Do you remember those record stores, HMV? Yes. I loved HMV. HMV was good. HMV they crazy. were like, they, they, you know, this is what these kids don't understand. These places were an experience. The record store was an experience. Like, it was a big deal. Like, you got dressed up to go out with your friends on Friday and Saturday. Before you hit the club or the movies or the mall, you went to the record store. Yeah. And, and you, you heard what you heard. This, right. you know, instead of just hearing the one single track, you heard the whole album. Yes. Or the whole CD, rather. Yes. And you figured out if it was worth putting your you money. You decide if you wanted to buy it. But see, and that was the thing that kept artists putting out good shit. Because if you think about it, in the era where we had record stores, there were no skips. You could play a, 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 an album cover to cover. There were no, no, sit, no, I'm sorry, no skips. And I'm, I'm Freudian slipping because I'm thinking of Christina Aguilera's Stripped. And there's a funny story one day I'll tell people about. I'm not going to tell them about that now because this is a new show. But that you for me not was like a cover to cover. I'm trying not to get canceled. But yeah, that was a, yeah, that's an interesting story. I'll share that like some other time about that that um, album um, that came out when I was a teenager. But but what I wanted you to talk about though is is how you always encourage the kids to work. You, you, you tell them, you know, not to rest their laurels on ballroom or TikTok, which is like just about to tick, tick, boom.
or whatever hot thing is trending. You know, like I remember you, we, we talked about the early days of, you know, when Madonna's Vogue had come out. Mm -hmm. And this played out in polls in the episode with, with Blanca. And she was, you know, thinking that all of them were going to make it now because Madonna did a song called Vogue and Vogue is big. And you talked about how it didn't save them. Save some yeah, people. Yeah. Some people went out and, you know, create, got create careers and everything like that. But I just remember you saying that you have to have a backup plan. You have to do something else. You have to have something <laughs> solid. Definitely. 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 Because speak to these kids, I mean, buddy. Speak to them and, and, and just, just, just speak to them. Let's be like this. I mean, I know a lot of people who went out, quote unquote. I mean, there was this Aldona. I think Aldona was in Ebony. Aldona was in Ebony. She was at the um, tryout for Madonna's pose. Aldona outvoged Hector Extravaganza, but because Aldona was my complexion, Hector got chosen. So you always have to have a backup because let's be like this: even though the times have quote unquote changed, right? Did they really? Because as far as goes, they're still going to choose what they're going to choose where they're going to choose them, how they're going to choose them. I've just done an interview, well, a couple of things for um, Wells Fargo. Cool. They asked the question, do you feel success is linked to luck? Or do you feel success is hard work? Success is linked, is linked to luck. Because I've known a lot of people who worked very, very hard and didn't get to where somebody who came in off I mean, pretty much off the street with a higher, lighter complexion. Boom, boom, boom. Three promotions, three raises, and they out. Yeah. While the other person still working hard to try to get to where they are. So have something you're doing and work it out. My cousin, a cousin of mine, he was working. He got hit in his car. His car was pretty much totaled. And his job that he's worked at for over, say, 10, 15 years, gave him, has given him the shaft. What? Always have a he's backup plan. A backup. Always. He's, he's, get, he's creating a backup. Always. He told them, forget it. I'm done. Shout out to my cousin, Douglas Daniels. Um, yo, listen. He said, forget it. I'm done. I'm ready to retire. Or I, whether if I'm not retiring, I'm quitting. Because y'all not going to treat me like dirt. And that's exactly. it. And he's, exactly. he said, I'm go going to, uh, get, you know, he's giving him back, his backup and calling it and moving on with life. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. Because too many times you will get kicked down, kicked around, and pushed around for nothing. So make your nothing something. Get a backup, have something extra that you do, mm -hmm. even if it's once a month, once a week, whatever, and do it so that then you know that in hard times, you're in a better situation. Right. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, it, and it's so important because at any time, and I think the pandemic taught a lot of us this, you know, things can just change like that. You know, a company can just decide that, you know, they no longer need you or they do need you, but they are going to put you through things that things that you just cannot deal with. You don't want to deal with. And this for me, what I'm doing right now is something I've always wanted to do, but I also have a job, you know, until this becomes the, the job that is the job i'm going to keep my other job you know i i have to i have bills to pay you know right and even and wait a minute and even then yes and even then you still even though you may not do that full time right. you have something part time just to be safe just to be secure because everything changed left to right cold and hot back and forth that's it that, you know so i'm thinking of 
And in my head, so many like songs that I have known of that have so much truth and basis in reality have been mm -hmm. sung by people over my lifetime where I'm at the point where I don't even listen to music anymore. I don't really? listen to music anymore at all because I don't hear something that catches my ear that's based in reality enough to make me want to hear it. Well, I have some music that I'm going to share with you and maybe that'll make you feel a little, you know, inspired. But probably it's old music. <laughs> it's probably old music. No, it's actually, you know, newer stuff. It's just not Main Street. That's all. Oh, okay. It's just not Main Street. Stuff that I think you'd like because, be you know, it's just, you know. But the thing that I noticed today mm -hmm. with you know, the younger, you know, the, the kids and everything, um, they think that these things are going to save them and make it where they don't have to work again. They think OnlyFans is going to save them. A lot of them are doing OnlyFans. You know, I mean, you know... No, 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 no. Just no I, see, I'm in Maryland. So, they think the stunt to do is tell somebody, oh, we're going to do this and send us some money so you can join Oh, they're, they're doing that here send too. Some money. Send you some money. Yeah. I need you to send me your life. Send me your 25 years and I send you my 56. And as far as it goes, then you figure it out. Okay? That's this perfect. Is it. This is it. I'll send, you your, I'll send you 56 for your 25 <laughs> and the whole thing, I'll live it better than you. Okay? Cool. Because in these 56, oh, if let's put it like this. There's this, uh, what is it, this singer... Um, who used to say, oh, Ella, about Ella Fitzgerald because she was that good a singer. And as far as it goes, I can say about my life, oh, oh, baby. Yeah. I've yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something I noticed, too, just in the com within the community, is um, when mainstream culture is done, when they're finished, like, we saw it with, you know, Pose, we saw it with America's Best Dance Crew. We saw it with Legendary, which was on HBO. We even saw it with, with you know, Paris is Burning. When they're done with you, they will chew you up and spit you out. Thank you. When they're done yeah. with you. Yes. And, and that's the reason very why important I, I to not never felt, I never got into being famous. I never got into the thing of, you know, trying to be a celebrity and everything else. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy the the low level of fame that I have. Right. And I enjoy the fact that I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm in the Smithsonian Institute. I wait a minute. Stop. Them. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Why are you in the Guinness Book of World Records and the Smithsonian Institute? Please. I'm sorry, Smithsonian. Well, please Paris tell Burning us. Got me in both of them. Paris is Bernie got me in both of them. It's the number, it's one of the one of the films written up where you should show your your child at thir from 13 up from okay. 13 above right and um it's one of the oldest and longest and best loved documentaries in quote unquote history that's mm -hmm. one reason why we're in Guinness and Smithsonian Institute too so that. we got to clap it. up for that that is yes that that is just amazing. That is and, amazing. And, yes. You know, when, when people yes. say, oh, fuck Freddie, da, 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 you know, then somebody turns around and, and I'm right there and I, I'm walking away. I'm just being Man. quiet. I'm being quiet. Freddie, who's saying, saying that? How can you say that? How can you say that when he's in the Guinness Book of World Records? He's in the Smithsonian Institute. Are you? And they say, no, but I can be if he's in it. Go ahead, boo. Do it. Bye. I'm just yeah, still stuck on who's saying, you know, fuck Freddie and anyway, I, you know, it, I don't know. Um, well, okay. Aside from you acting and a very talented one, I might add, because I've seen streets. Thank you so much. I mean, it, 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 now, now, I don't want Vin Diesel coming after me, but it really doesn't take a lot to outshine Vin Diesel. I'm just saying. But you were a scene stealer. 
Thank you so much. You were. Thank you so much. But and even in those five fun. seconds in pose, <laughs> you, 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 you did the damn thing. You know what's so funny? I wrote my lines in pose, too. <laughs> did you really? Yes, I wrote my lines in pose. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. See, I was a creative mm-hmm. consultant. I acted and I wrote my lines in post. You need so credit for goes, that too. I got my checks. I got okay. my checks. Okay. I'm good. I don't have to look like it's me. Mm-hmm. But where I'm going with this is you've you've done those you've done all those jobs. Yes. What are some of the other jobs that you've had? Like after, you know, outside of you know working in children. I did a lot of background. I did a lot okay. of background acting. And um, there was a movie that came out as I was leaving New York that I was doing background in, and I laughed at it. I forgot the name of it. I really didn't care. But I didn't care because okay. it was background. <laughs> this is it. And, um, you know, um, I, I did background. I, I laughed. I mean, I met Kevin Bacon so many times. I used to tell him, I mean, I, he'd be like, oh, it's you again. And I'd be like, Oh, please tell your wife I love her show and stuff like that. You'd be like, oh, yeah. that. <laughs> stuff like So that. now like, you are so. zero degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon because you've met Kevin Bacon so many times. Yeah, around four or five times. Huh? Right, you're four or five times. Well, one time made you zero degrees. So, and I know you, so like I'm one degree of separation from Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about the show you did, though, because you, you did a show last year. You were in a show, like a comp, wasn't it like a, a a show or something, a play last year? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was just um what is it? Um uh, I was in a play last year. Um mm-hmm. it was called um uh, something of New York, right? Um okay. a sketch of New York. It was a sketch of New York. I was in that off Broadway play. It's a great, it's a great thing. Um, you know, go look at it. Joe Donazio, your magnificent director. I appreciate you. Loved you. Steven Soderberger, um, trust me, I want to give a shout out to you because hopefully if I write the script, you will accept it. Um, you know, give write a shout that out to script. People. Got to you, you, you got to write I, that I'm, script. I'm gonna work on it. I'm working now. On but it. if you were to write a script now, what kind of script would that be? Would it be a biopic, or would it be something you know more fictional? I'm gonna do something fictional because I don't want to. I don't want to. I mean, let's be like this. I feel my life has been out there enough that they pretty much know this. So as far as it goes, I need to do something fictional so that then they could know that that you know thoughts, emotions, feelings, and Really mm-hmm. get a good laugh because I haven't seen anything funny in a minute, and I've seen them trying but failing. But you know, is it because I think <laughs> the last movie I saw was mm-hmm. was uh, the Black Panther two. I think that's the last. Yeah, movie. me too. And that was last me too. year. I'm looking yeah. forward to Quantum. I'm looking forward to Quantum Mania, but the the you know because I'll do the Marvel movies, but oh yeah, I mean that's a given. That's that's yeah. a given, and that's what a lot of people don't know about you too. You are a, you are a big Marvel fan. You're a big comic book fan. You showed me your Archies. Remember yes. when I came over? You yes. showed me all your Archies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You see, let me show you. We're taking another tour, you guys. Okay. These two suitcases. Oh my. <laughs> hold half. <laughs> Of my comic book collection that I still keep. Half you guys. Just half. Now And those are it. not those are not carry on size suitcases. Those are like the big, you know, check in bags. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um that is and those comics I was thinking about selling them, but then somebody told me, Don't sell them. Let them go when you like when you die and let them go. You know. So then people have a part of you. I said, That's good. But um other than that um, also, I have, um, let me show you when this comes up and then okay. let me show you when this okay. comes up, right? I have the Avengers. I here. saw that. I saw that. <laughs> and then I have Capcom and the X-Men here. And then I have on the one that you're on, I have X-Men. So. 
Freddie is just like an all around cool guy that I wanted to be <laughs> friends with in high school. Let me tell you. <laughs> but speaking of high school, this is a good one. I got another good one for you. Very yeah. random though. Mm -hmm. If you had a time machine and you could go back in time, mm -hmm. what would you tell that Freddie that we all fell in love with on the pier other than the Powerball numbers? What would you tell your younger self? Keep doing what you're doing. Stay on track and enjoy your life. Stay on track and enjoy your life. Don't try to live it for other people. Um, stay true to you. Um, because in the end, you know, those people are not going to be there around you, you know, and in your darkest hours, who, you know, you never know who's going to be there. So if you stay true to the person you are and love yourself and respect yourself and, you know, hold yourself with some kind of pride, then maybe, you know, things will go good for you. Just be true, be positive and hold that light up for yourself and then maybe others to hold it to and respect it. Love that. That you know what? Awesome. I mean and that's kind of what you did anyway. That's what you did anyway. You know, let's put like this when you have everybody has a life. Nobody's life is perfect, but it's perfect for you. So embrace it. And that's what I've done. That's what I hope others do. And that's what I want to, if anything, if I ever tell anybody young and I counsel somebody young, which God knows it may happen soon enough. Um, <laughs> it's just because it always happens to me. Mm -hmm. So um, I tell them to embrace themselves, embrace their life, and don't be shaken by other people. What would you want to share with the future? Like, typically, people ask people, they say, oh, well, how do you want to be remembered? Like, I, I think that's just very cringy. Like, I don't like to ask people that. But what would you share with the future? I'll, I'll just say it like this. I'll leave that to their imaginations because everybody probably will have their own opinions, their own thoughts, their own feelings, and their own version of Freddie Pendarvis. And that's the version that they'll love or hate. And, you know, they'll idolize or whatever. And I want them to just enjoy that version that they create. What do you think about the future for black queer people? Oh, I'm, I'm very nervous, very scared about that because so many people are running to cut their dicks off. And I'm like, wow, really? Really? Hmm. Y'all didn't hear Peppa LaBeija, did you? It's like she said, if you, if you're not fat, women don't have it fabulously. I know women right now who get dogged, right? These are quotes from Paris is Burning. And back then they're saying it. So you're running to get it done to, to live. I don't know, but hey, cool. You know, I can understand, you know, whatever, but that point, I don't. Because the amount of people doing it you know when something is too much, life and reality balance things out. Because so many people are going trans, you know there's going to be a minute in history where either trans people are going to be quote unquote purged or something negative is going to happen. It's going to backfire. Something's going to happen. 
I don't want to be around when it happens. But from my understanding of history and reality, when something swings too much to one way, it's got to swing back, got to balance, got to come to some point of balance. I don't see balance with this. Well, maybe that's because, like I'm saying, I'm still fresh from New York. But, you know, that's it. That's why here is kind of refreshing to me. So many people want to stay at least masculine in the sense of appearance. So that that's a great thing for me. What about the future for Black people just in, in general? Mm. We've... We've come so far and we still need to love each other to go further. That's all I can say. I'll take that. Well, what are you doing next? What are you going to do with yourself? Can we look forward to any, any new projects? Um, are we going to do that one man show that we talked about so long ago? Are we ever going to get <laughs> that out the reason you why. Know, shoot that that's out the part? reason why I've talked. I've, I've, I've had a conversation with somebody, and you know they they wanted to do a one man show with me. I told them, I said, I I I just don't feel. I just no no. no. But I can kind of work with. Um, kind of getting a script together that's a satirical take out take on the experiences I've had for someone else to do. They say, how about you be in it? I said, okay, I'll be in it. But doesn't mean I'm main character. But I'll help I'll, I'll, you know, main character will be somebody else playing it. But that's it. And I'll be writing it. So they said, okay, cool. Um, get to writing. Let's see what you can do. I have 25 pages of something and I have to create transform it. I, yeah, that is. I have to transform it into an actual script and I have so much more to go. So I really want at least 100 pages of this that I could turn into, you know, 200 pages of that. And now, if there are any screenwriters out there, I know there are, you know, anybody who can help Freddie, I'm going to leave Freddie's info and you can reach out to Freddie and, and help him get that show on the road. That would be that, that Freddie Pendarvis story. There's, <laughs> you know, there's a guy, too. There's actually this guy I follow. Yeah. And he reminds me so much of you, like it's not even funny. His name is Kyle Price. Kyle's like a, um, he's an actor. I think he models some kind of like model. But um, shout out to Kyle. Kyle is just, just too freaking cute. He had a birthday too recently. Um, both of you Aquariuses. You just remind me, y'all remind me so much of each other. <laughs> like it's just so fun. Like even, and he was he was in a, in, a, in a web series that I used to watch. It was called Love at First Night. And just some of his mannerisms and just the way he says things, I'm like, this is Freddie's child. <laughs> it's uncanny. <laughs> it's uncanny. I got another child who went to um who left and went to fucking Europe. I was so mad at him. Oh but wow. I love him too much. I love him so dearly that, that anything he but did, this, uh, listen, Shannon, I love you. I miss shout out to dearly, Shannon. sweetly, honey. But and shout out to it. Kyle Price. We gotta we gotta get Kyle to pray, play you in whatever kind of Freddie biopic or show or whatever. I don't know. Listen, yeah, I said it first. So just make yeah. sure that I get yeah. my executive producer credit. That's all I want. I just. Okay, cool. That's yeah. all I want. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. I just because want my executive like, producer credit. The reason why I don't want to be in it, the reason mm -hmm. why I don't want to be on camera is because when I did pose, right, and everybody didn't recognize me, even though I had on the hat all the time on the judges panel um you know um and i walked around into stores and i could buy things and pay bills and do things and that was it you know six thousand dollars for my grandmother's water bill <laughs> anyway 
Um, <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I enjoy that. I enjoy having the money and the freedom. Mm -hmm. See, one thing that a lot of people don't understand is when you are famous, you're trapped. You are so trapped. There are more pitfalls and traps than you know of. And so many people, seen and unseen, are ready to get you. When you are like, how do I gonna say it? Well off, mm -hmm. financially well off, we're saying. You're better than being famous. And to get to that financial well-offness, that liquid part of, you know, you've, your money is coming in to the point where you don't have to worry about your bills. You don't have to worry about anything. Your credit card is cleared and your car is completely paid for. You know, your rent, you got six months rent in the bank and, you know, you're good. That's it. You got a condo, a co-op, a house and everything is cool and paid for and, you know, that's it. That's a long way to go. That's a lot to do and a long way to go. Yeah. You know, you're someone who just, and I, I wasn't going to share this. I wasn't going to say anything. But you're someone who anytime I need you, <laughs> like literally, I can call you, I, I can call this man at three in the morning and he will pick up. And I don't really like to use the term giving flowers because everybody uses it. Everybody says, oh, I want to give this person their flowers. Oh, oh, let me give this person their flowers, that person their flowers. But I have to give you Freddie Lee Pendavis, Mr. Skylar Barron. I have to give you your flowers. So I'm giving you your flowers. And everybody, I just want everybody to know this is my gay dad. Yes, that's my gay son. So if you're messing with my gay dad, you're messing with me, and you do not want that. Let's like this. He too, he too big. He too big for you to mess with. Trust me. He too big for y'all. Not even that. Like they just don't want the smoke. Like I, I have a machete earring. Like you really don't want to mess with me. <laughs> I know. Well, listen. I'll just say this. Don't start none. Won't be none. That's all. I'll just say that. Pete, let's put like this. I'm old. They, they don't want to mess with me. I ain't. They don't. Let's put it like no. this. No, old. There, nobody wants to con and trick this. Okay. Exactly. But Freddie, I thank you for being here. We had some little technical issues that we'll never have again because now I am officially an owner of a Zoom license. So, <laughs> okay, let's clap it up for that. Congratulations. So, is there anything that you want to say before we close out? Um. I send my shouts out to everybody. Um, I just want to thank. Um, uh, I have to thank. I have to thank Jenny. I have to thank Saul. Um, I, I thank my family, and my ancestors, who you know, because there are always somebody who came before you, and somebody who will come after you. So I thank them all. And I appreciate you and, you know, for doing this. And, you know, I, I, you are my gay son and the proudest son I have. And I'm so proud of the things you've done, the things you've achieved and accomplished. Because trust me, I know it is hard. It's, like I said, I've done three, four. It, it's just, Don't start. <laughs> You have done you know I'm a, I just had this whole tirade about me with a mach so, machete. I've done three, Don't four start, semesters in my masters, and you've got two masters. So as far as it goes, trust me, I know, know that shit's no joke. So at all. Yeah, I know. You've worked hard and still paying the fuckers off to Columbia. Yo. Well listen, support the show. Cash app Chris NYC. That C is in, in C is in, in, in cash, R is in rubles, I is in, in investment. <laughs> is investment. N is in NASDAQ, Y is in yen, C is in Kaching. So yeah. <laughs> what is the point? I don't have an H in my name. 
So if you send money to, to Chris NYC and that it has an H in it, I feel sorry for you because that's not me. So okay. what to say. But how can people get in touch with you? Oh, but wait, do you want them to get in touch with you? That's the that's the main thing. Okay. I don't want all the freaks and weirdos hitting you up. Well, okay. I'm very I'll say it like this. I do have an Instagram account, right? Freddie Lee Pendavis, I Instagram. And I did get a Facebook account. I did hate Facebook for a while. I had a, an account. They treated me like dirt. Like, oh, I would not even go. What, I were they banning things. you and stuff? Were they doing that stuff? They were banning me, cursing me out. Everything. It was just really bad. Yeah. And somebody else used my name as Freddie, Freddie Pendavis. You know, and they showed up, this person all this love, quote unquote. And mm. the person was, it was funny. It wasn't even the person because they said my uncle. And they said this, that, and the other stuff. Like that. And I'm like, you're not my niece. Yeah. And the pictures that they showed was never me or never anybody I knew. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Did they shut so, that page down at least? Did they get that no, page I, shut down? I, I, I left them alone. I left them alone. I, them, I let them have it. So now I'm back. Freddie Lee Pendavis. Um, and that's it. It has, you know, some limited pictures on it. Um, Which is really all you need. I mean, we just... Instagram, we just need to know it's you. Right. That's it. Yeah. On both and, and, I, and, and it's, it's funny because I just, I had my Instagram page for about, when did Instagram start? I want to say Instagram started in like 2012. So the page that I have, I've had since then, but I just didn't put anything on it. Didn't have any followers, any friends, any anything. And then I have a page for the show. I did just start that page because mm -hmm. I needed a page for the show. But my own personal page, um, uh, at Chris David TV, um, I've had for years. Yeah, and it's funny because I was just like adding people, and and I don't think that they know it's me because we haven't talked in so long. And mm -hmm. it, it was just amazing to see like some of my friends, like how like they've just like progressed over the years. Like mm -hmm. um, this one girl I went to college with. Shout out to uh, Body Courage. Her name is Danielle. Um, she was she's an actress. Um, I don't think that she knows that it's me on her page. And I used to like, we would see each other in, 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 um, in the hallway and I'd be talking to her and cracking jokes and stuff. And she'd be like, Chris, if you don't go to class, if you don't go to class, if you don't do something with yourself, but it's just amazing to, like to see just her progression is what I'm saying. And, and, um, just, just to see like everybody just on there, like my, my one home girl, um, who's going to be helping me with the show just to see her like she's doing big things she's over at revolt like it's just i don't know it, it, it i like instagram because you get to see your friends you get to see the people that you've made connections with and you get to see just how they're doing and everything mm -hmm. i dislike it because i think people are on there for the wrong reasons people are just that's the reason why I'm, likes I'm, and I'm followers very and all funny that nonsense. about this because after a certain amount of um what is it connections are like they start to pay you and i think people are just on that you know a lot of people really aren't into something for the joy or pleasure of it just for the money of it mm -hmm. and, and um that's the thing that holds me back from a lot of you know the social media stuff so you know um I, they're both freddie lee pendavis okay um on facebook and instagram we'll put that up and, and when when we get your cash app set up we'll we'll put that up also um I'll just put that up, like maybe in just you know the post or something like that. But listen, I mean, you know, is there anything else you want to share with the audience, with your fans out there? I, I, nothing really. I mean, I, 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 like I'm saying, I'm I have stuff here. I have a little more I'm, I want to add, and um, I'm going to work on it. Hopefully. By the end of this year, if I could get a, a, a you know a writer to work with, then I can you know definitely pump it out, and um, we can get some. I can hopefully have something out for them soon. You know, um, yes, I'm still working. I'm still working as it an artist. It, it never, never ends. It never ends. Yes, I'm still working as an artist. I'm you know that is me, and. Um, I just want them to be happy in their lives because it, 
not just the hard part, but the, you know, it's so much, it's so worth it. It's so worth it when you're happy because everything gets better. Everything gets better. And it's contagious. Like I said earlier, other people pick up on it and they want to be a part Definitely. of it. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank everybody for listening and watching, you know, remember. Thank you also your so much. Very so much. Thank you very so much. I appreciate I want to thank you. Freddie Love you. for being my guest. Thank you so very much, Chris. I will see we'll see each other again. Oh, we're, we're definitely talking. going to see each other again. Let me just close this out. You stay where you are. I want to tell everybody, you know, I want to tell everybody thank you. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your cat, tell your dog, tell your doctor. Hell, listen, tell Ryan Murphy to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chris David TV and follow our show at The Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube and on Patreon for exclusive content like some outtakes from this interview that may not fit all on you know the video. Um, once again, that's Chris with the C, no H. David like the star of David TV on IG and Twitter. The Chris with the C, no H. David like the star of David <laughs> show on YouTube, IG and Patreon. I also have a cash app, which is Chris NYC. C is in check. R is in rubles. Or <laughs> run me my money, bitch. Um, I is in invest. <laughs> S is in silver. N is in NASDAQ. Y is in yen. C is in ka-ching. Like Mariah Carey says at the end of any time you need a friend remix, we out, we out, we out, we out, we out. That is it. It is a wrap. That's the end.